Have you ever been punished for something you didn't do? If so, you're in good company. And how you respond to that is important. Welcome back to Dining Room Bebo's with Pastor Jeff Step. Today we're looking at 1 Peter 2, verses 21 through 23. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He says in verse 21, to this you were called. Now, is Peter here saying that we are called to suffer? I mean, in a way, yes. It's actually very similar to what Paul says in Philippians 1, 29 says, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. Now, both of these passages, neither one of them are saying that we should necessarily want to suffer. But rather, if we are mistreated, what we're called to do is to endure that mistreatment in a particular way. And what kind of way is that? Well, what Peter says here is, is with the same character, that Jesus showed. When mistreated, we have an opportunity to be truly Christ-like. And that's our goal, isn't it? To be like Jesus, to be like Christ? No, when we seek to be Christ-like, our Christ-likeness can speak to others when our life is going well. But it is during our times of suffering that our light shines most brightly because it is then that our hope and our joy are most apparent. And we have to remember, as we read 1 Peter 2, that, that Peter is not speaking theoretically. I mean, he's writing to people who are being persecuted for no other reason than that they love Jesus. And he speaks right to their situation. And here in verse 22, he quotes Isaiah chapter 53. Have you read Isaiah 53? It's incredible. You know, Isaiah 53 was written about 700 years before Christ's birth, but it describes in prophetic detail Christ's suffering on the cross for us. And Peter, here in verse 22, actually quotes Isaiah 53 several, uh, here, but also several times uh, in the next few verses. And he says in verse 22 that, that he committed no sin and no deceit was found in in his mouth. That is in Christ's mouth. He didn't lie. He never sinned. Now, if you've ever been punished for something you didn't do, that's just not any fun, is it? But chances are you've done wrong plenty of times without getting punished, right? I mean, maybe you don't think you deserve the speeding ticket that you got this week, but what about the three times that you could have gotten one last week but didn't? I mean, we we may complain about the times we get punished, but never about the times we didn't get caught, right? But Jesus is unique in that he had more of a right to, comp to complain and to fight back than we did when he was mistreated because uh, he never did anything wrong, ever. He never sinned, not once, but he was punished for our sin. Think about that. A holy God was punished for our unholiness. And how did he respond when he was mistreated for the things that we did? Well, it says in verse 23, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. He did not retaliate. And this is the same Jesus that calmed the storm by saying, peace be still. He showed power over nature. This is the same Jesus that healed people by simply saying, you are well. He forgave sin by saying, you are forgiven. This is the same Jesus that commanded demons to leave people, and they did. Jesus had all the power because he's the creator of the universe. He has authority. I mean, what could he have done to those who are mistreating them? What could he have done to his tormentors? If you've seen the movie The Rages of the Lost Ark, 
You may remember that scene where they, they open the Ark of the Covenant and that guy's face just kind of melts off. I mean, could Jesus have done that to the people who were putting nails in his hands and feet? Certainly he could have. He had the authority. He had the power. But he didn't. In fact, he didn't even make threats to them. He, he didn't say, you can do this now, but I'm going to get revenge on you on Judgment Day. I mean, Jesus alone has authority to judge, but, but he didn't. And if he didn't retaliate and he didn't threaten, then we shouldn't either. Instead, Peter says here that he left his case to God. You know, there's a word for this, and Jesus refers to it in Matthew 5, 5. He said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, the word meek doesn't mean shy, and it doesn't mean weak. In fact, the Greek word is, is the word praus, and it refers to a horse that has been broken. The word meek means strength under control. When we're wronged, rather than cursing or getting revenge, we should be the bigger person and respond in love. In other words, we let God settle the score. Jesus tells us to pray for the person who has wronged us. I mean, that's what he did. As they nailed him to the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He forgave and he entrusted himself to God, his Father, who would raise him from the dead. So as we close, just a question. Who in your life is the hardest person to deal with? Maybe it's a coworker, maybe like we talked about last time, maybe it's an employer, maybe it's a family member. But in your relationship with that person, how successful have you been at being Christ-like? Have you responded with meekness and love? Or have you responded to them out of anger and revenge? Pray that God will help you to be truly Christ-like. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like or comment on the video or subscribe to our videos. Visit us at newparisfirst.com. We'll see you next time on Dining Room Devos. May God bless you.